Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yes! Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire, and I am super excited to be scrutinizing another video for you today. This time we're going back to Kyiv, Ukraine, and we're gonna look at this solo jazz competition. Solo jazz is a very, very cool competition. If you can dance by yourself and you've got the, the swagger and you've got the technique, it could be really entertaining to watch. So I don't know who's in this one, so let's just jump right into it. All right, here we go. Yes, okay. Oh, I like her phrasing. Her transitions are solid. Out of my way, out of my way. I like her, she's very flowy. This is great. This is this is gonna be really unique. Okay, I'm doing a video real quick. Oh, our transition was solid. Yes. Yes, nice slip, slop, slides. Oh, yes. This is a tough one. Let's talk about it. Now, I've got to tell you, this is going to be a really difficult competition for me to judge. It really is. Um, and, and I think the main reason that I will say this is because 
everyone wins because they can actually do solo jazz dancing. Now, normally people don't really elaborate on what solo jazz dancing is, nor do they really say what those parameters are that make solo jazz vintage solo jazz. Um, so I like to talk about that a little bit. I like to really highlight why I think a lot of the, what I would call improvised movements look like they fit from the 1900s to the early 1940s and why it looks a certain way and why I think the majority of these dancers nailed it. So everybody gets third place right off the bat. Improvisation is something that has been a part of American music and dancing for a long time and, and it really kind of broke out in the swing era. And what made this particular style so unique and still unique today is the fact that people are free to improvise with their body, but there were some basic constructs there that make it look like the time period. And most of the cases when people aren't doing like signature moves that were made by very specific people, usually you can tell it's vintage by the isolation of the upper body. There's typically more movement with the, the legs and maybe the arms and limbs more so than the torso. So I just gotta say all of these dancers crushed this competition. I have three that really stand out for me. Um, but again, I gotta say everybody really nailed it on this one. Now I, I wanna give feedback though, because at, at this particular level, when everybody can dance, I'm not really judging anything objective aside from what I just explained to you. I'm really talking about what I liked uh, and what I look for um, when I think of good dancing. Something about dancing has to be authentic for me. When I watch people dance, particularly by themselves, I've got to feel like I know a little bit of who they are while they're at the same time doing vintage steps that are semi-recognizable. So I got to say my first, the, the one that really stood out to me that I would say is really kind of like my third favorite. Um, I would give it to um, this lady right here. She had, she had orange on, right? She had orange, really flowy movements. Now, what I liked about her is obviously I can see the distinction in her movements focusing on Charleston. She's doing a whole lot of vintage Charleston movements and she's taking advantage of her personality. I can see it's she's less aggressive on her personality. There's a little bit of a flow, but I also see some slides. So I see tap influence. I see a lot of other things. I see playfulness. But when I watch her, she feels a little bit more distinct compared to some of the others. So for me, aside from her technical prowess and doing it in a way that makes me say, yeah, she's doing vintage solo jazz, I liked her. I, I really felt like I got to know her personality. So that's the way I look at third place, obviously, is can they do the technique? And obviously, everyone I'm judging, I'm looking to see if I can get an emotional response to be able to identify who they are and somewhat like it and, and you know respond to their movement. Um, my second place was almost my first place. But I just, the, 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 the reason I like this guy, he's second. The gentleman had the white shirt and the blue. What I like about his movements is that it's incredibly uh, varied. He's got a lot of movement. He's not just breaking out doing solo jazz, uh, just authentic jazz movements that really aren't like Charleston based. He's not just doing Charleston. He's mixing a lot of different things very quickly. And that's really hard to do um, just by itself, just to be able to coordinate all your movements. So more props to him for being able to do that. Um, some people practice a lot on those sets. So I can assume that he does a lot of practicing. But what, what I like about it is that it is so complex. I, for me, he's the best when it comes to the complexity of the movements. And, and I'm more, I have an affinity for, you know, harder ideas, like what's difficult to do. And a lot of his movements really, for me, um, stood out simply because they looked just a little bit more syncopated. There was just a lot more movement happening. Now, I will say the downside to that is whenever you do have a lot of movement, there tends to be clutter. 
And so it's really hard to balance presenting a lot of gr great ideas um, with the balance of the what came before and the past. And that's super hard because you got to know when, when to be quiet and when to talk uh, when you're dancing. And it's tough when you have great ideas because sometimes you may have to tone it down in other areas of your body so that you can really highlight those key points. So I will say that was probably the drawback for me with this gentleman's performance. I felt almost like he could be a hip hop dancer. Not saying that 100%, but there were little cues for me to see that the, the movement in his upper body was a little bit more aggressive and on top of the beat, like a modern dancer, instead of swinging behind the beat just a little bit. So that's the difference I can tell uh, watching him. But in terms of ideas, I love the ideas. The ideas were solid. Probably my, my second favorite ideas. Now, my first place. My first place uh, was a real surprise because she kept me glued the whole time because she did have the balance I was looking for. This balance is so hard to obtain. It's the balance of show me something that's identifiable that I know is vintage jazz and do it right. Don't just do a bunch of jazz steps and it looks like a hip hop dancer, right? So everybody passed the test mostly on that. She crushed that, but then I got to see the complexity of her phrasing. Her phrasing was just as complex as the guy I just explained, but there was something that was a little bit more, more refined. There was a little bit more control in her upper body. It's a little bit more quiet and more more reactive to the music more so than proactive to the music. And that's the difference between like modern music where it's you're hitting your movements right on top of the beat. It's a little bit more forceful as opposed to swinging the movements where there's a little bit more of a drawn out delay. And she's the lady that had the blue dress on. I think she was first. What I love about her movement, she starts off just literally bouncing a little bit and swinging to the music and I say, okay, I got where she's at musically. But then she starts adding more complexity to her movement. And whenever the music does a dramatic change, she adds an incredible amount of syncopations and never loses touch of how her body needs to be whenever she's doing those movements, right? So she could have done this all choreographed and botched the whole thing by doing too much with her upper body um, that would have taken away from the very um, swing feel that or, that you need to have whenever you're doing solo jazz. So I will say she was my favorite. She had the balance that I was looking for. I could identify her personality when she's dancing. I kind of feel like, yeah, that's, that's someone that I could know by watching them dance. But more importantly, she had the balance and that is so hard to obtain. So Congratulations to her because she's my favorite. She was, she just crushed it. Awesome dancing. So what do you guys think about this? Who was your favorite dancer? This was really hard for me to judge because normally, like I said, I'm super critical on dancers who just can dance and they get out there and they do a bunch of jazz moves that they see and then they don't do them correctly. And I use that word correctly very specifically. I mean correctly knowing how to discern if it looks vintage versus something that just looks like a modern hip hop dancer trying to do a vintage move. There's a, there's a distinction there. And so the only difference for me is, is hard work and time. Uh, Cause eventually as you know, if you know how to dance and you learn how to do solo jazz movement, you'll start adapting to swing music, which is the hardest part to adapt to if you're a modern dancer. And so eventually, those rough edges, that aggressive nature um, that tends to come with the, the modern improvisational dances uh, tends to fall off and people begin to relax a little bit and swing their moves. So most of these dancers had that. That's what made it so hard, so hard to judge, but she had it the best for me in the beginning and um, that was so enjoyable. I'm gonna watch it again. I never really watched these twice, but this might be my first time to watch something twice. <laughs> Not with you guys watching this, but after I turn this video off. So what do you guys think about this? Who was your favorite dancer? If you guys aren't doing swing dancing yet and you wanna learn how to do some solo jazz, I encourage you to do that. It's really, really fun. You should take lessons wherever you're at. If you can, wear a mask, do what you need to do. If you're at home and you wanna learn how to do it online, you should check out our community online, our Street Smart Swing community. We've got 
hundreds of courses that we put together to help you learn how to swing dance, but more importantly, how to fix yourself when things go wrong. You know, I didn't like people always feeling like I needed them when I, whenever I was learning swing dancing. It was so annoying and, and I didn't feel like people had my best interest in mind. So I put over 10,000 hours into studying and research and dancing and social dance and just to be able to figure out what's important and, and what's objective and what's subjective so that, you know, if you want to have that same power too, you can do that at home where you're at. So check out those courses if that is something that you desire. So let me know what you guys think about this solo jazz competition. Congrats to everybody who performed in this. Hats off to you. You guys crushed it. I'm super happy to see so many great dancers in one video. Not just one dancer that was crushing it and everybody else needs some work. Everybody was great in this. So hats off to you. Congratulations again. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And hopefully if I don't see your comments below, I might see some of you on my class online. Take care.